Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and we are taking a look at Elastic Beanstalk. Before we talk about what Elastic Beanstalk is, let's talk about what a platform as a service is, or a pass. A platform allows customers to develop, run, and manage apps without the complexity of building and maintaining infrastructure, typically associated with developing and launching an app. However, the trends these days is companies are actually building their own platforms on top of infrastructure as a service. So I would say that, um, uh, I guess it's called platform engineering. And so that is becoming a lot more common, but before you used to, used to just have a few passes out there, um, specifically for applications, uh, like web, web servers that people wanted to put up. A very famous one was Heroku. Um, I think Heroku still exists. Let me just double check that here. I'm just going in a different browser. So yeah, it's still there, but Heroku is not talked about as, uh, as much before because they had a free tier and they got rid of that. Um, but yeah, I'll just like pull it over here. So, so we have Heroku over here and this one started out because of Ruby on rails. Um, but then they expanded out to all these other ones, but it still is, uh, the easiest platform to deploy on. I think they got acquired. That's why, um, and the, and the free tier went away and that's why people don't talk about them anymore. But, uh, the downside of, of platforms as a service is generally they can be more expensive than, uh, provisioning things yourself because they're betting that you're, you don't know how to configure an application. And so you're going to take advantage of that. However, cloud service providers were uh, smart because they did not charge you uh, uh, more. They just, whatever you're using underneath is what you were charged for. So that's where things like Elastic Beanstalk or um, uh, for Azure, uh, Azure apps, Azure apps or Google's app engine became uh, good alternatives. They weren't as nice as Heroku, but um, people don't talk about Heroku that much anymore. I think Render is a, a becoming a very popular one, but I'm not really sure as I don't need to pass. I can just configure things myself. So anyway, proceeding forward here. Um, so the idea here is that uh, for Elastic Beanstalk, you choose a platform, upload your code, and it runs with little knowledge of the infrastructure. I don't believe that anymore. I feel that Elastic Beanstalk has become a lot more complex, and it's very difficult to get working nowadays without actually understanding the underlying components. Elastic Beanstalk is not recommended for production applications, and that is AWS's recommendation. Um, and I think they're just trying to tell that to enterprises who might expect expect that um, they get a certain level of support or functionality of it. Um, Elastic Beanstalk can uh, provision a lot of things for you. Um, and you could do this all by yourself, like without, uh, without using Beanstalk. But the idea is that if you don't know how to set up a load balancer or an autoscaling group or a database um, or a bunch of other things, it can do a lot of the work for you there. And the idea is that you would go ahead and choose a platform you could, of course, uh, deploy Dockerized containers. So this kind of competes with another service called AppRunner. So I would say that I used to really like Elastic Beanstalk, but as the years have gone by, the service has not, uh, not gotten better. In fact, it doesn't feel very well maintained as there are some legacy components. Like for instance, they still use launch configurations instead of launch templates. Uh, there is a, um, a service role that's supposed to be created for you, but now they don't do that. And so you have to create it manually and it's very hard to get health checks. And I would just say overall, I do not recommend Elastic Beanstalk anymore. In fact, I tried to do labs, re-recording all of our labs for Elastic Beanstalk here. And I absolutely just became very frustrated with it. So I do have the new labs, but I'm gonna tell you, we don't get the app working 100%. Uh, we do learn a lot uh, doing the labs, but I'm gonna keep the old labs from a few years ago because that kind of shows you uh, more of the deployment models uh, when it successfully worked. And I think that if you were to watch those or even to attempt it yourself, then you'll get a lot of practical knowledge there. But I have enriched the lecture slides here um, to bring more of the code forward. So, um, you know, if you don't get them in the labs, you'll get them in the lecture slides. So just understand that there, okay?